Over the last couple years, I've seen a lot of food creators online absolutely trashing fast food. And you know what? I think it's time someone said something. Okay, so maybe that intro was just a tad dramatic, but it's true. I'm just tired of certain people online tasting fast food, then proceeding to throw up in their own mouth as if they just ate a piece of literal human shit. Fast food, it's fire, okay? It is. You know it, I know it. Let's just stop lying to ourselves. And this is exactly what I'm out here trying to prove with this new series that I'm starting today. I'm gonna be reviewing the iconic fast food items that we all know and love, identifying their positives, and then using those positives to inspire my own unique home-cooked version. I'm basically just trying to shine a more positive light on fast food, like a tribute. Anyway, today we're gonna be starting with the place where fast food began, McDonald's. And what's their flagship item? The Big Mac. All right, so here I have the Big Mac. And before I get started, I need to see what I'm trying to recreate. Okay, I need to, need to cut this thing in half. Where's a knife? I chose the fucking dullest knife to cut this thing, damn it. Fuck. I'm gonna be honest, this, whenever I go to McDonald's, this is not what I order typically, but here we go. That's wet. Let me get a napkin. Okay, yeah. Let me just make sure it's not soft on my face right now. Let me take another bite. Yeah, honestly, there's nothing bad about a Big Mac. I think that it gets a lot of unnecessary hate because of, of course, the middle bun is what a lot of people complain about, that the meat to bread ratio isn't right. But honestly, to me, it's really not that bad. I wouldn't say that it's the best fast food item you can get, but I think that it represents the baseline or kind of the standard to compare all other fast food items to, if that makes sense. I would say like the main things that I'm getting from this are definitely the sauce that's very pickle and mayo forward, and then like a small hint of beef, and then a fair amount of bread in there. Not great, not bad somewhere in between. But I think that gives me a better idea of what I'm gonna try to recreate myself, so I feel pretty confident in, uh, in getting started. All right, we have a lot to prepare. So let's start off with the buns. In my opinion, making your own buns is one of the best ways to take your burger eating experience to the next level. And today we're gonna be doing this thanks to a brioche recipe from Ethan Klebowski. To start off, in this bowl we have 90 grams of milk that's been heated to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. To this we're going to add 2 whole eggs and 15 grams of sugar. And then mix everything to combine. Once everything's been mixed, we're going to add 5 grams of instant yeast and then mix gently one more time. From here we're just going to let everything sit for about 5 to 10 minutes or until you start to see bubbles form on the surface. Meanwhile, you're going to want to combine 300 grams of bread flour and 6 grams of kosher salt into the bowl of a stand mixer. And then add your yeast mixture once it's had the opportunity to sit. And at this point we're just going to flip the switch and let everything mix until it's well combined. And for those wondering, yes, you can definitely do this by hand, it's just going to take a little longer. And once your dough looks a little something like this, turn off your mixer and let everything sit for about 30 minutes. This is going to give the dough a chance to relax and let all of the flour hydrate. Once the 30 minutes is up, we're going to start incorporating one whole stick of butter, a few chunks at a time. After the butter's been incorporated into the dough, it's going to be a sticky mess, kind of like this. From here you're going to start kneading the dough by hand. Use your preferred technique, but I'm using the slap and fold method right here. And you'll continue kneading until everything is smooth and uniform, kind of like this. At which point we're going to take the dough and place it into a bowl to proof until it's doubled in size. In my experience this typically takes about 60 to 90 minutes. After the dough's done proofing, we're going to start dividing it into 5 equal pieces. This should be about 110 grams. Next we're going to form the portions of dough into buns by tucking in the edges and then rolling the seams on a flat surface. Once your <clears throat> balls are formed, 
Place them in ring molds set on a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. Then using a small bowl or glass, flatten each bun out a little bit. After flattening, we're going to be doing one final proof. So cover your buns with plastic wrap or a clean dish towel, and once again we're going to let these sit for about 60 to 90 minutes. When the buns are done proofing, we're going to be brushing them with egg wash and then sprinkling them with sesame seeds. At this point, you're going to be ready to bake. So set an oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and put the buns in for about 20 minutes. When the 20 minutes is up, you should be greeted by these beautiful golden brown buns. Just look at that. Softer than your mother's ass. Now we're going to prepare our toppings and condiments, starting with our sauce. To a medium bowl, you're going to add one cup of mayo, a half cup of ketchup, one tablespoon of mustard, one finely diced dill pickle, two teaspoons of garlic powder, and salt and pepper to taste. Then we're going to mix everything in slow motion. Just look at that. That is <clears throat> creamy. Believe me when I say, the only way to eat lettuce on a burger is shredded. And the Big Mac is no exception. Start by cutting a whole head of iceberg lettuce in half. Then you'll cut the core out of each half, and then slice the lettuce into thin ribbons. Then lastly, you're going to cut those ribbons into manageable pieces. Next, you're going to prepare your onions. And for this burger, we're going to dice them up as finely as possible. Like so. Next will be our pickles, and no, they're not optional, but all we're going to be doing is slicing them into coins, or you can just buy dill pickle chips and save yourself the step. Your choice. When it comes to cheese on a burger, I am an American cheese supporter. We don't need anything fancy here. So open up that package, take off the plastic, and use that unnatural sheet of cheese with pride. Was it created in a lab somewhere? Probably. But I don't give a single shit. With our condiments done, let's start making our burger patties. Now really quick, I want to address something here. No, I did not grind my own beef. Why? Because it is a pain in my ass. And I can buy perfectly good ground beef at the grocery store. Here I'm using 80-20. About 3 ounces of it per patty. Once our patties are formed, we're going to be cooking them in a cast iron skillet set to high for about 2-3 to three minutes per side. Don't forget to season with salt and pepper. And once your burgers are finished, it's time to start assembling. Start things off by placing your bottom bun. And then lather that thing up with our creamy sauce. Add some of our finely diced onion, and then a little bit of shredded lettuce. Then one slice of our plastic lab cheese. After that, we're gonna put our first burger patty on. And then the dreaded middle bun. More sauce, more onions, more lettuce. Pickles, once again, this is not optional. And then our second burger patty. And finally, we're gonna sauce up the top bun and then carefully place that on top. Look at me struggling with this bun. Come on, come on. Stay, stay. And that's about it for my own unique homemade version of the fast food icon we've come to know and love. Okay, so here are my closing thoughts. The Big Mac is a solid fast food item, all things considered. It's definitely nothing that's gonna make you cream your pants, but it gets a very respectable seven and a half out of 10 on my scale. And it at least deserves to be mentioned in the best fast food items of all time conversation, simply because when you think fast food, nine out of 10 of us are thinking about the Big Mac. I'm definitely not trying to say that it's the best, but it's definitely where everything began. And for that reason, we can't ignore it. And then as for the version that we made in our kitchen here today, it was very, very solid. It has all of the core components that you come to expect uh, with the original Big Mac, but I think that each of them was elevated in the best way possible. It was pretty fucking good. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, that's all I got, and I'll see you next Friday. Thanks.